Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. What a joy it is. I'm Ramona Lynn Bethley, lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Alexandria. And you are in for a special treat. Not that just being in church is not a special treat all on to in, in, in itself. But today is a Festival Sunday, Tom Payton Arts Festival Sunday. And so we have the Reverend Kenan Pickett. Uh, with us this day, and I'll say more about him a little later in our worship service. But as you uh, think about it, you know, art is expressed in many forms, from sculpture to canvas to stained glass, there's at least half of a stained glass, and uh, boy, it is different. Jean, you are so right. <laughs> it's different with that. Uh, how do I look in this light? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, art is expressed in so many different ways, even spoken word, poetry, and sermon. And so we are going to celebrate the arts this morning. Now, if you haven't done so already, I hope that you'll take a minute to sign in on the black registration pads, those black binders that are inside each aisle. If you'll fill those out, and if someone slips in near you, beside you, on your pew, in front of you, or behind you, I hope that you will uh, help them register their attendance as well. I uh, love to know who is here, and by you signing in helps me do that. So uh, if you'll just take a moment to do that, I would be so grateful. So as we celebrate the arts through worship this day, let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. God of art and inspiration, we join our hearts and our minds and our hands in worship of you this day. Send your Holy Spirit upon us as we open ourselves up to you through word, through prayer, through song, and through scripture. Infiltrate every fiber of our being and excite every one of our senses so that we can experience you with our whole selves. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to invite you now, if you are able, to please stand and we will join together in our order of worship that is found in your worship bulletin. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything suitable for its time. God created this sacred mystery. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 139 in your red hymnals, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Praise to the
And now, as one body, let us affirm our faith. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. You may be seated as we invite Emily and our children to come forward for our children's time. Katie, are you coming? I want to wish you happy birthday. She turned four yesterday. Yeah, happy birthday. There we go. She's going to go, come with Thomas. All right, everybody say happy birthday, Katie. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Katie. Katie. <laughs> She was on the fence about coming, and then R.L. had to call her out. <laughs> okay, I need to talk about something very serious this morning. I need to talk about my nose. What do you think about it? What do you think? Is it, is it a good nose? Is, is it weird? I've thought my whole life my nose was not great. It was not one of my favorite features. I was kind of like, eh, if I just had a different nose, I'd look a whole lot better. I didn't really like it my whole life. I just thought it was kind of like, Bleh. and um, recent, a couple weeks ago, actually, one of my students who is, y'all, she's one of the best artists I've ever met in my whole life. She's only in fourth grade. She's in gifted art already, and the stuff she makes, I've never seen anything like it before. She is incredibly talented, and she's kind of strange, and I love that about her. I absolutely adore that about her, and she left me a note on my desk a couple weeks ago, and here's what it said. This is going to sound weird, but I think your nose shape is beautiful. <laughs> and it was maybe the nicest thing I've ever been told by anyone, because I've never in my life thought my nose shape was beautiful. And here's this person who I value her artistic eye very much. I think she makes beautiful art, telling me I have a beautiful nose shape. And let me tell you something, ever since then, I'm into it. I, I, I really like my nose now. <laughs> so, I'm like, Shamaya thinks, I'm sorry, I let her name slip. I, my student thinks her nose, my nose is beautiful. So it's kind of all, art is in the eye of the beholder, right? Like you might see a piece of art or something outside or the Power Rangers or whatever it is that you love and it might be beautiful to you, right? But to somebody else, maybe not so much. I know you think they're beautiful, and maybe not so beautiful to other people, okay? <laughs> so, I know, okay. Um, the, the verse that we are reading today is, y'all, I think it's my favorite verse in the whole Bible. God has planted eternity in the human heart. I say it over and over again in my head throughout the day because it just, it makes me feel better to know that he's seen everything and he thinks your heart is beautiful just the way it is. He made your heart. He made it perfect. He made it to last forever and he made it to do big things here and he sees everything. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for making our hearts beautiful and perfect. In your sight. Amen.
Thank you, Emily. In scripture, Jesus tells people to come to him. He says, come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so many times we know that we need the rest, but we don't believe where we're going to get it from. Um, I know for a really long time in my career, I had my directing job at the church, and then I had my gigging life in bars. And I felt very much like my songwriting and my creative life was apart from my religious life, almost like I was living a double life. But the truth is, there are no double lives with God. We only get one. We only get one life. And um, Scripture actually tells us that God wants us to be creative. Uh, Ephesians 2 verse 10 says that, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He's prepared your creativity before you were even born. He knows everything you're going to create because he created you. And so um, today, as we are trying to draw closer to God, our prayer is that he adjust our vision, adjust the lens that we're looking at our life with, and um, I shared with the first service today that I overslept today, which I don't think I've done on a Sunday in about 20 years. It doesn't happen, and, uh, but it did today. And we talked about how worship would still go well because it had nothing to do with me. We worship because God is good. We can be having a good day or a bad day. It doesn't matter, but because God is good. When we worship him with our hearts, he can make beautiful things out of nothing, out of the smallest thing. Let us pray. God, scripture tells us that all things are from you, including us and including everything we make. And so we ask that you help us to glorify you with our lives. Help us to accept that we are part of your most amazing creation here on earth and we were made to, to build. We were made to create, build, and love. And so we ask that you help us to worship you and sing your praises all of our days. In Jesus' name we pray and sing. Amen.
Thank you, choir and Zachary. Always a pleasure to have you, all of you, here on Sunday mornings. As we come to our time of prayer, just a few people to lift up in our prayers this week. In fact, an entire nation uh, I saw on the news, and perhaps you did too, where Iran attacked Israel uh, last night. And so we just want to pray for the people, uh, those caught up in this escalation of war, and uh, for their safety and for that country. Uh, it is called the Holy Land for a reason, and so um, we just pray for everyone there and their safety. Prayer praise for uh, the Tom Payton Arts Festival happens because many hands, many people have worked hard to make it happen, and I am so grateful. I'm also just grateful for its 50-plus year history. When you moved to this location in 1968, your pastor said, let's start a permanent art collection, and here's one way that we can do that. And so you have been faithful year after year after year to give this gift to the not just the art community, but to the community in general. And so uh, thank you, and just thank you to all who have worked so hard uh, to bring this festival to life uh, again this year. So we thank you for that gift to all of us. Uh, in addition to Katie, we have some other birthdays this week. Mary Rucker had a birthday last week, and then uh, Rosemary Walton is having a birthday on Tuesday, and then Joyce Morrow, you're having a birthday on Thursday. So happy birthday, uh, and we praise God for your life and your life among us. Now let us go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Ageless and merciful God, you created all time. You are sovereign over every passing moment. For you are the one who made everything suitable for its time. So we ask you, O oh Lord, to be near us in this time of worship. Help us to look back over our past and to celebrate all you have done for us. Help us to praise you and to give you the glory for all that you have accomplished through us. But don't let us rest on our laurels, for there is much work left to be done. If we are going to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So empower us. Empower us to face the future, for there is only so much time to bring about the change we have yet to see. There is so much injustice that continues to rob so many of their future. There is an absence of peace that steals hope and sows hatred. It is time for a change. And we want to be a part of your great work in this world, starting right here, right now, in this community that we call home. Lord, we especially ask today that you have mercy on those who are lonely, tired, anxious, or despairing. Be with those who are without a home, without employment, or without a family. Be with those who have lost hope and those whose joy have become sorrow for any reason. And remember each of us in our dark times and teach us not to worry about the future. And now, Lord, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your unconditional love. Fill us with determination. Fill us with your perspective as we continue to work with you and for you to make a difference in this time and in this place. This we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we have one of the traditions of the Tom Payton Arts Festival is to always have a guest preacher, and you are in for a treat. Our preacher this morning is the Reverend Kenan Pickett. He is uh, currently the pastor at Blackwater United Methodist Church in central Louisiana. Not central Louisiana as in where we live, but there's actually a town in Louisiana called Central. And that down outside of Baton Rouge, Denham Springs area, and that is where Kenan lives with his family, his wife Rachel, who is with us sitting by Rusty, and uh, their daughter Olivia. And uh, Caleb, their son, has already found his place at the board in the back. At least that's where he was a minute ago. Uh, and uh, that's what he does on Sunday mornings at his church. And so uh, there we go. He's just doing ministry <laughs> uh, uh, like, his, like his dad. Uh, Kenan uh, graduated from SMU uh, or graduated from Perkins School of Theology at SMU in Dallas, Texas. Uh, was ordained a couple of years ago uh, at, in our annual conference, at our annual conference. In fact, uh, one of the things I remember about his entire ordination class is that they all wore red cowboy boots. <laughs> Uh, so you didn't wear them today. I didn't. I didn't. I should have. <laughs> Kenan is also an artist, and so he brings that perspective of art uh, into the into his preaching, into everything that he does. Uh, I I said something in the earlier service. So. Uh, earlier this week, Monday and Tuesday, Kenan and I took a preaching class uh, that was taught by the professor of preaching at SMU or at Perkins School of Theology, and it was on humor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that I am the funniest person you know <laughs> until you hear Kenan this morning. So he, uh, he certainly brings the spirit of joy uh, to, to worship uh, as well as the spirit of art. And uh, I'm sure there's more I could say about you, but that's enough for now because uh, they didn't come to hear me. Oh, well, some of them might have and, you know, Surprise. now going, oh, wow, we got somebody different. Uh, but you are in for a true blessing as we welcome uh, Reverend Kenan Pickett to the pulpit. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see you all. Thank you for uh, having uh, our family here. We have been so excited to get to Alexandria. That's always a fun uh, thing for a family of four. Any of you ever go on a road trip with your family? That's fun. <laughs> it is. It really, really is. And so I just want to thank you, RL and uh, Rusty. Y'all have been such a great uh, host, and, and uh, thank you for having us. Your church is beautiful, and uh, Rachel and I have loved our time here so far. I'm going to be reading to you from Ecclesiastes. Uh, we're going to start in chapter 3, verse 9. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet, they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it. God has done this 
so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah, my family and I, we traveled the short distance here, and it is so refreshing to come and to be somewhere kind of new and different, uh, and we always enjoy exploring Louisiana. I'm not from here. I'm originally from Texas. They say everything is bigger and better in Texas. I'm just bigger. So I wasn't better, so they kicked me out. No, that's not, that didn't happen. I, I'm, we came willingly to Louisiana. We wanted to be here, and we're thrilled uh, to be here. But I have to tell you, we were packing to come here, and I just realized there is, there is just a huge imbalance in the things that us boys pack versus what the girls pack. Is that true in your family, too? If you have boys and girls in your family, let me tell you, the guys fare on a lighter side, whereas you ladies, man, y'all can weigh us down. Olivia brought a blanket and a pillow and a pack for the car and two suitcases, and they just have more stuff than we do. Caleb and I packed together in one bag. So it is just interesting, and it reminds me of the truth that every single one of us show up with different baggage. Some of us are as light as a feather. And if that's you, awesome. Some of us, not so much. We're carrying around more things with us, aren't we? And so I want you to do me a favor. We're at an arts festival, and it's about creativity and about using your imagination. I want you to imagine that we are all together here this morning, and that we are on a journey in life together, and each of us has brought our baggage. Okay? And as we're gathered here, some of us are weighed down by worry. Some of us have some regrets. Anybody here have regrets? Oh my gosh, you are going to have to be more honest than this. <laughs> Nobody here has regrets. Good job, RL. Wow. Wow. Rachel, we are doing something wrong. RL's got this place shaped up, man. Um, and then there's uncertainties. Anybody have any uncertainties that you grapple with? Traveling with others is an adventure. It's kind of well, kind of like a sitcom, <laughs> right? We have all different things. We come from all different perspectives and backgrounds. And I think that we can kind of liken it to a road trip with a family. It's a little bit chaotic, but a whole lot of adventure. And so as we navigate sometimes, we do so today using GPS. Now, I'm just going to own something with you all. I am the world's most directionally challenged human being on God's earth. That, see my wife. My wife is the first one to attest. And, and this is a true story. I went to go pick her up at the New Orleans airport, and I used my navigation, but there was construction on a, a new a parking area and an old parking area, and what I did was just go back and forth between the two, um, never making it into the actual airport terminal, and I did that for two hours. Yes, that happened, <laughs> two hours. That is a true story. She was so put out with me that she decided that it would be good to offer to Uber to the gas station where I was pumping gas because I was about to run out of it. <laughs> so that leaves us with a question, what do we do with our detours in life? What do we do with that? How can we have detours in our lives and still, still enjoy our sometimes unexpected adventures? Would you pray with me? God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing to you. And I pray that in the name of our Savior, our Redeemer, our risen Christ. In his name we pray, amen. As we enter into this season right now, many of you may be going to new schools next year. 
And that is a time of transition, of new beginnings. Many of us stand at the crossroads of uncertainty on the path of what lies ahead. Are you among those who are thinking about where your road is going to lead next? To the halls of higher education? Maybe in some trade school or the corridors of a new career? Or maybe you're hoping you find that summer love romance that you've always dreamed of. Perhaps you're like me. You're navigating your career. You're haunted by the questions of stability or advancement and the elusive pursuit of success, right? And what about that world that we're shaping, that our generation is, is striving to create, shaping for our own children uh, who will inherit the legacy of our choices? Well, that can be unknown and uncertain, can't it? We can be really weighed down with some of that. And yet, for even others of you, there are maybe shadows of health concerns, financial insecurities with retirement that loom large, casting doubt on the future. Anybody ever feel any of that? Six people. You're getting more honest. I like it. I like it. And maybe even more of you fear loneliness or the chill of age. As we get older, we become more frail and solitude can cloud the horizon ahead and it can create anxiousness in us. And if it's not the future that weighs us down, that causes us to carry baggage, sometimes it's the past that plagues our thoughts, right? Ghosts that haunt us and our hearts. We all carry the burdens of regrets, missed chances, wrong turns, <laughs> unmet expectations, dreams that we had to leave by the wayside. How many of us gaze backwards with longing, wondering if the paths that weren't taken might have led to greener pastures? Anybody want to admit it? Thank you. My gosh, you're doing great. But these cycles of worry and these cycles of regret and this baggage that we carry, you know what it can do? It can freeze us. It can put us in limbo, right? Makes you feel like you just don't want to do anything, right? Where the past is tugging at you in your present and where it's leaving very little room to appreciate the joy or, have, or to have gratitude in this moment. Are you familiar with the endless comparisons, the insatiable yearning for what other people have, what they might possess, or what my kid would call FOMO? You ever heard FOMO, fear of missing out? <laughs> so many of us rush through life's rhythms, juggling. Anybody juggle in here? Juggle, juggle, juggle constantly, or plate spinning, always spinning some plates to keep things going. You're busy, your schedules are full, your calendars. It's weight, right? And it keeps us from recognizing the simple, beautiful melodies of what's right in front of us. And all the noise and expectations and all of those inner conflicts that we carry, do you ever struggle to see the beauty that's right here? Do you ever wonder about the purpose of your path? Do you ever wonder what really lies in that unexpressed gratitude that you have just waiting inside of you, but you can't quite access because you're living for just that extra thing that you feel like's missing as we contend with grappling with those unseen things of our future and with the echoes of all that chaos in our past, have we lost sight of the divine tapestry that's kind of woven through our lives? That beautiful tapestry of experience, of struggles, yes, but also of beauty, beauty where God has lifted us in the love of God and in the grace of God. And to embrace it so that in each moment we're living out of our faith and out of our gratitude. Well, that's what I love about this text today. You've got who I call the wise guy, right? Solomon, right? This is one of the wisest people 
of his time. And he writes here in this fascinating and helpful text, especially in verse 11, and he talks about how God has made everything suitable for its time and how God has wired into us a sense of the past and the future into the people. And yet, what God has done from the beginning to the end is largely mysterious. Largely mysterious. How does that sit with you? The people of Solomon's time, they faced a whole bunch of challenges and circumstances, which undoubtedly sparked him to give this message. See, there was political instability and great uncertainty in this context. A lot of tension around the stability of the kingdom. The people felt anxious about their future and their direction as a nation. Hmm? There were economic pressures, which caused social injustices. <laughs> the disparities between the wealthy and the poor in ancient Israel led to not only economic pressure, but also unjust practice. So Solomon encouraged them to find contentment and purpose in their current circumstance, despite the challenges they faced. This is from the wise guy now. There was a lot of spiritual and religious and philosophical confusion in this time. Different worship practices, idolatry, a blending of various religions. And this here today, gone tomorrow reality of being human caused big questions to go unanswered. Like, what is the meaning of life? What is the nature of God? Why is God doing this to me? Ever hear that old song? Why me, Lord? What have I ever done? How many of you have been singing it? Come on. <laughs> Solomon was saying that trusting in God's timing and living in the present helps with clarity. And it leads to a path of spiritual renewal. And then these people, we've got to remember, they were just like you and I. They were just ordinary people. They put their pants on and sometimes dresses the same way that we do. They all had expectations heaped on them. They and their families were supposed to be poster children for what success and happiness looks like. I dare to say, friends, that not much has changed. Anyone here find our politics and the state of things a little crazy these days? <laughs> Anyone here find our economy and our system of justice challenging? Anyone here finding the church and her future concerning? Anyone here living in a perfect family who's a poster child for happiness and success with not a problem in the world? <laughs> if that's you, then this sermon is not for you. You may go on <laughs> to lunch. I'm glad to see so many of you have stayed. The wisdom of God, though, saw that all of this clouded their ability to appreciate this moment. So Solomon, he encouraged them to live in the present. It seems so simple. He wanted them fully present in their current moment, finding joy and purpose in the now, rather than being consumed by anxieties about the future or chained to regrets from their pasts. Solomon encouraged his audience to trust in God's timing as divine timing. Oh, but I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I like to be in control of the timing, don't you? I am the only one. <laughs> he said to the people that God intended each moment for a specific purpose, and that was hard for them to see clearly. So Solomon, in his infinite wisdom, encouraged them to live in the now and trust in God's timing. To do so would give them a framework for navigating challenges and 
to help them find resilience to face life's adversities. Now, here is the rue to what Solomon knew. God's mysterious working in time moves us towards a deeper sense of fulfillment and purpose in our lives and guides us towards a destiny that is beyond our earthly understanding. Mysterious. (laughs) Think of it like this. God's secret clock leads us to places we could never imagine. You know, we're in the midst of an arts festival with all of this brilliant creativity, and yet God still has places to send us and for us to go that we can't even conceive. That's good news. That's awesome to consider. Every single one of us, just like the folks in Solomon's time, is grappling with the mysteries of life. Grappling with the timetable. Grappling with God's plan. And when we trust God and let our creativity shine with God's help, we can beat all this worry and all this stress and all these problems and all the anxiety that they cause. Let me tell you how that's going to impact things. In the timeless wisdom of God's word, a transformation awaits each and every one of you, friends. All of you. And it's calling you beyond the comfort of your complacency. It seeks to shatter the shackles of regret and anxiety. And it's inviting you to a new path, one of deeper connection with the divine. On this path, you are transformed by gratitude and trust. As you confront the shadows of anxiety about the future and these regrets of the past, see, a shift occurs in your heart when you employ this text. You find yourself anchored in the present moment and your worry and your weight and your baggage is lifted. It's lifted and it's replaced by a sense of gratitude that can saturate your heart and your lives. Your trust in God's timing then becomes unwavering, guiding you with a steady hand in the ebbs and flows of the now. See, on this path, something else amazing happens. On this path, you rediscover your purpose and your awe of God. (laughs) No longer are you bound by the confines of FOMO, (laughs) fear of missing out. You discover instead this new lens in which you can view your world and your life's experience right now. And in this reclaimed perspective, you can walk a path that is lit up by purpose and by wonder where each step has meaning because it is walked in God's grace. On this path, you accept change and surrender. The change within you is not just a mere surface change. It's a profound, soul-shifting and altering change. You lean into the disruptions, the challenges, your comforts. And you allow them to reshape your priorities and reshape your perspectives. You surrender to the sacred mystery of God's timing. (laughs) You find strength in vulnerability, resilience in surrender, and the courage to step into the unknown with the Holy Spirit as your guide and helper. On this path, you live out of gratitude and joy. Gone are the days of racing through life's rhythms and striving for what's just out of reach. You ever done that? Like strive and strive and feel like there's just one more thing that needs to happen for me to ever feel content. But you never quite reach it. 
that's gone. Instead, you live in the present moment filled with gratitude for the blessings that are right in your face. You know Jesus Christ was right in their face and they didn't see him because they could not get over their concern about the future and their regrets and worries from the past. They missed the Messiah. (laughs) That is not our story. We're on this side of the resurrection. Amen? We're on this side of the resurrection. Amen? Amen. See, Jesus' path for you has always been one of faith and purpose. In this transformation, you emerge not just as a different person, but as the truest version of yourselves, a beloved child of light and grace and purpose. Every single one of you has meaning. The obstacles that hindered your journey, boy, those are just stepping stones now. (laughs) See how God changes that? They're stepping stones to growth and resilience and to spiritual fulfillment In this transformation, you're not just changed, you're reborn. And you're empowered to warmly embrace the fullness of life's tapestry that's woven throughout our lives. And you do that with open arms and open minds and open hearts. Jesus is calling you to step into a reality where gratitude and joy and purpose all are intertwined and they create a life that rises above human limitations. See, God is the greatest artist. God knows exactly what God is doing. And we're all part of it. Now I want you to really use your imaginations with me here. Picture that we're a group where everyone believes and we create out of this love now that we know we have. Each one of us a shining light. Each one of us making the world a better place together. If we are changed by Christ who makes us new, then he will not only reshape our lives, but he'll sync us up with God's divine timing. (laughs) Just like we've been brought together today. And in God's vision, our collective souls will radiate with his life and the light of his transformation. And we will step boldly back into this big, beautiful world that is marked by his healing and his reconciliation through Christ. And we will find that there is power in unity. (laughs) And that there is power in our joined prayers. And that we can change things. And that there is power in our open hearts. You see, his love in us, it creates waves of grace that just wash out over the world in a great, big, beautiful ripple effect. And they can change the lives of our sons and our daughters and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And we can pass down our faith instead of our anxiety and our fear. As we embark on our new shared pilgrimage together, each one of us carries not baggage, but unique blessings. Not just baggage, but beauty. And there is a beauty in the unknown. We don't have to fear our future. We just need to embrace our present. Just step into it with unwavering faith together. May God's light lead us down a path that is lit by divine mysteries. Mysteries that unfold in the present moment. And as we stand together at this threshold of revelation and blessing, I pray God's sacred mystery ignites a fire within each of you in your hearts. And that it fuels your journey with purpose and with joy and with creativity. May the echoes of trust and gratitude and surrender linger in your hearts, shaping you with grace and light. And on our shared spiritual journey, I hope we're like, well, a well-packed suitcase on a family trip. Organized, overstuffed, but with faith and trust. 
and surrender and everything we need for the detours along the way. May our journey be filled with the joy of today and right now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Kenan, and help, help me thank Kenan for being here with us this morning. We have been blessed. Thank you. My thank you. Well, there are some great ways to connect into the life of this church. Uh, I hope that if you have not already taken the opportunity to uh, check out the art in the Fellowship Hall for the Tom Payton Arts Festival, that you will take time this week to do that. It's open daily from 10 to 4. Uh, it, is, it is amazing, and it is beautiful, and it is awe-inspiring. In fact, on Wednesday, we are going to take some time in our Bible study at 6 o'clock to incorporate the art from the festival in our Bible study. So I invite you to come, uh, come to dinner at 5 and then join me at 6 for our Bible study, and it, it will be based on uh, the art that we, uh, we, we will enjoy uh, at the festival. Also, uh, speaking of of the festival, the Children's Day, Children's Art Day is this Saturday, and it is limited registration, so if you have not registered your child yet, uh, please go online, go to our Facebook page, I think, the Tom Payton Arts Festival Facebook page, website, the website, that is where you can register your child uh, for that art day, and all the information you need is there, but please do that uh, soon and very soon. On Tuesday, the Women of Faith are gathering for a spring fling. They're going to enjoy a lunch out at Applebee's. I think that is at, at 1045. It's on the back of your bulletin on the calendar, the exact time. Uh, and then, you know, on Wednesday, we had a wonderful time this last Wednesday filling the baskets, those welcome baskets for the Methodist Children's Home. You, because of your generosity, we were able to fill a hundred of those, and now they need to be delivered, and you'll see all that information in the insert, but on Thursday, May the 9th, we are going to carpool and caravan. We're going to load up our cars with all of those welcome baskets, and we're going to drive to Ruston and deliver those baskets, and then they are going to give us a little tour and some information about the Children's Home and that ministry there, and then they're going to feed us lunch. Uh, so, you know, it didn't get any better than that. So I hope that you will make plans to join us for that. Uh, carpool with somebody, and we will all follow each other, and it'll be just a delightful day. Uh, now, to, to, to those of you that are visiting with us, pardon our progress. Uh, just, I'm just going to name the elephant in the room or the scaffolding in the room. Uh, last week, they came down and they took down half. So we're going to do a little family business here. I'm just going to update you with where we are on the stained glass window. Um, the, in the next six to eight weeks, they've taken half the panels back to the studio. Uh, every panel, you know, is either bowed out toward the courtyard or bowed in toward the sanctuary. And they are going to, they've taken and half of them back. They're going to flatten them all out, clean them all up, make sure the integrity of the lead is all intact. Then they're going to install some rebar So, because right now each panel is supporting the panel below it, which is why we've had the bowing. And so they will fix it where each panel will support itself. So this is about a $225,000 renovation of this window, of which we have collected $137,000. Before you panic, though, we also have some memorial monies that we can use, which is about $78,000. But if my math is right, that's still a little short. Now, some of you may be like me and Rusty. We made a pledge, and we still have a little bit more to go on that pledge, uh, but it's not enough to cover that gap. I'm just going to say that in front of you right now. Uh, so maybe some of you also have made a pledge that you need to finish, and I would encourage you to do so. Maybe some of you gave in 2023, but the IRS has been good to you, and you're going to get something back, and you can do a little more in 2024. I don't know, but we're going to close that gap, and I'm very faithful that we will do that. Uh, your leadership board has been working on... Uh, 
our historic tax credits uh, and selling those, and I've never done that before. Uh, my district superintendent said, I'll see you in jail. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Uh, it's legal thing to do, but uh, that's all very new to me. So now I've told you all our family business. Uh, I could have done all that in writing, but it's certainly a lot easier to just tell you in person. So we're all on the same page, uh, and I believe, I believe in transparency. So there we are. Uh, we're we're going to get this window fixed, and it is, it is beautiful already, and it's going to be more beautiful when it's all said and done. And if you have any questions about anything I just said, see me ask me i will i will tell you uh i'll tell you anything you need to know show you the books all of that so uh, it'll be a few it'll be a while we will enjoy this scaffolding we'll have a new back row uh for a couple of months or so maybe even longer and uh there you go there you have it that's that's all i know now one of the best ways to connect in the life of this church is to make this church your church. And if you are ready to do that, even after everything I've told you about the window, uh, <laughs> we're going to celebrate that. We'd love for you to come forward as we sing our closing hymn. But if it makes you nervous, please see me after the worship service and I can tell you all the wonderful ways in which you can become a part of the life of this church. Elizabeth? Please join us in singing our closing hymn. It's number 98 in your red hymnals. To God be the glory, number 98. Please stand and sing with us.
Ken and I want to invite you to go ahead and make your way to the back because when I start the benediction, I go fast. I might run over you. So I'm going to give you a head start because I know you're going to want to greet him. I want to thank all of our guests for being here this morning, especially the Pickett family and the rest of you. Thank you for choosing to worship at First United Methodist Church of Alexandria. I hope that you will come again, but I want you to go forth from this place with the good news of the great mystery that our God is a good God. So tell everybody you know where you work, where you play, and where you live. And may the peace of God be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.